Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today, we are taking a look at the GeForce Oberheim OBX. <laughs> Magical. Okay, so I'm going to do this uh, a little bit differently. I'm going to play lots of presets and stuff, but I'm also going to do some sound design, give you a basic overview of how this works. Right, we have along the top here the advanced section. We can close that there, and basically here you're left with what you would have bought if you bought the hardware. OK, apart from the fact you have these macro controls and some other cool stuff as well. Let's just open the whole thing. There's several things to notice as well. On certain sections, you will see this ADV, which means advanced. This gives you access to further parameters within that section. So, for example, in the LFO section here, if you hit advanced, you'll see certain things will change on this section. So intro means that you can have a delay on the LFO coming in. We can get in, into all that. On the portmento one, you can change the mode. So if we look at the top here, you will see what happens. I'm going to press this mode switch once and you'll see legato. So... And then we have glissando. Now, Glissando, I'm going to go back this and I'm going to increase the portmanteau rate, go back to advanced, and we are on, uh, if I press this, again to Glissando. As I play a key, It will step between semitones and if we have both engaged we can create all sorts of very cool effects right let's just look at another preset quickly here's another patch Now these macro controls here, I have them mapped to my MIDI controller, so let's see what they do. You can find out what destination any of these macros is anytime by just tapping on destination and we will see output gain for LFO amount and the output gain and you can change or remove the stuff as well. And to add a macro is super easy, so say for instance we wanted to add this macro to this cutoff and get it to do this, as well as this. we need to do is pick this up drop it on here and then we can right click and make the adjustment so i'm going to have this macro open the filter cut off to there as well as do the other two things it's assigned to okay Let's tap on our preset browser here. Whoops. Actually, wait till this goes off. You can set this, 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 the time for this kind of information that stays on. If you go into settings here and look down here, if you go scroll down a little bit further, uh, parameter display time, I've got set to eight seconds, but you can have it go up to 15 seconds. And I think it's 15 seconds. Anyway, listen to this. Have you? <laughs> The dogs go mental outside right you can have it up to 15 seconds and it will stay on here for that long so if i twiddle a control you'll see here you'll see what the delay time is and it will stay on for uh for the eight seconds that's handy to have because otherwise you're not gonna know right so but we have that now attached to our macro and once this goes off we can now access our preset browser here but we can also access it anytime by going into here so if i choose say init patch now we're just left with our let me turn that up a little bit i've also got the volume map to my midi controller as well so we have 16 voices of poly polyphony maximum we 
have unison mode, mono, legato, so mono. It's just going to act like a mono synth legato. We'll play legato poly, of course. Unison, and this is directly related to the amount of voices, of course. So a unison of 16. I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit because it will get loud and hit unison and then detune it. Now, unison is a monophonic sound, so... And then you can decrease or increase the number of voices here. Right, so let's go back to poly. Turn the volume back up. You also have an advanced feature here as well. So if we click on advanced, this allows us to set our voice panning. And now you'll notice that we're getting different uh, pan positions for each note we play. This makes for like really lush kind of pad sound. So if we quickly build a pad sound very quickly, let's let's set our attack. Our release. Let's bring our cutoff down. Let's put some reverb in, shall we? Let's turn it on. Let's bring oscillator two in on a triangle. I'll get to this in a sec. Let's take the frequency. So you see that that is a really wide sounding pad now you have a different a few different presets uh let's see on the init is there's nothing so and maybe it's remembered my preset number four and uh, it doesn't matter if it hasn't we can reset all that so Now you've created this super kind of wide pad by going into advanced mode for the actual uh, um, voice panning. So I'm just going to quickly initialize this again because there's a couple of other things that I want to show you. So. On, on an initial patch, right, uh, Oscillator 2 mix here. So it's uh, you have Oscillator 1, Oscillator 2, and then the mix section. I'm going to turn Oscillator 2 up. Okay, and they're both set on a saw wave. We're going to use the vintage control, and what that will happen is add Oscillator Drift, which is, which is what happens in analog synthesizers, old analog synths. The oscillators would very slightly drift in and out of tune with each other, only, only slightly. So if I drag this up now, you'll hear that happen because we have two oscillators involved in this sound. We've brought up the volume of oscillator too, so. Now we have transposing. And then we can detune, let's spring this in. We can also detune oscillator two. Let's 
get back to normal mode for this. So it's very easy to create kind of string sounds. Let's have a look at our LFOs. Uh, my keyboard at the moment, I'm using uh, our Keylab Essential 49. That does not have Martyr. It does not have Aftertouch, so I can't show you that. Uh, velocity. Let's bring this. The harder I hit the keys now, the more it's going to open our filter. You can assign the velocity to... Let's open a filter back up. You can assign velocity to your gain, which would be kind of normal. Let's turn the velocity up and... So now it's playing. Softer and louder the more I hit the keys. What else could we got here? Uh, frequency mod, frequency decay, or uh, and then you can assign velocity to any of your macros. And the harder you hit it, the more of that macro will be um, applied, sort of thing. So, biff. So let's quickly run over the LFOs. So, sign, square, and sample and hold, right? This is your destination's depth and destination two. Okay, so for example, oscillator one, most easiest thing. Oscillator one, I am going to turn down oscillator two. So now you're just hearing oscillator one and I'm going to bring the depth up. So you can hear the LFO is affecting the rate, uh, uh, the sine wave is affecting the pitch. Okay. We can also have this on square, sample, hold, sign, right? You can do it for oscillator two as well, or not. And you can also have it affect the filter. If we are on a pulse wave, of course, let's switch our saws off because these are blendable. We can apply it to the pulse width modulation as well. So, of both. It's it's dead it's dead obvious the the modulation on here it's just, it's super obvious now right so let's just quickly look at the advanced features for this I'll turn oscillator two down so here we have this sine wave let me bring the frequency of oscillator one back down uh, and I'm gonna modulate the uh, I'm gonna do it quite drastically. Okay, go into advanced now, and now we have a different thing. Retrigger. What will happen is every single time, at the moment, this is not going to retrigger. So it's going to pick up that uh, LFO, wherever it is in its cycle. Retrigger. We'll just re-trigger the LFO at the beginning of every single cycle. So it, 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 you can, it's up to you. It depends what kind of vibe you're going for. If you want your LFO to change every time you hit chords or you want it to just continue through its cycle, having it continue through its cycle is really nice on pads and stuff like that. Okay. Phase you can play around with. Smoothing, but the intro thing, this is the thing, right? This is cool. If I take intro right up and I now play a key, it now fades that LFO in. 
So if I have this set quite and take the depth down, I can set it so I can introduce vibrato without me having to play with mod wheels or anything. So that's really nice as well. Um, filters quickly. It's a low pass resonant filter. You have noise. And you have keyboard tracking. So. It's so. Very dark. And we'll open up as this tracking is up. As we go up the keyboard, we're going to open up this filter. So. Which is quite. Quite nice there. Okay, the oscillators, if we switch all these switches off here for the oscillators, what we're going to be left with is triangle waves. You can see it written underneath. And at the moment, I have both of these um, on triangle wave, obviously, so oscillator one and two. our indicator here to set the semitones so we know we've got a fifth or anywhere in between and uh yeah switching the saw on for this one can use our mixer to blend between both of those. You you get it right. Modulation refers to the filter envelope modulation amount. So for example, if I yeah, we've got enough cutoff to hear this. So if I bring the attack for the filter envelope up and a decay down, sustain down, release to about the same as on the uh, uh, loudness envelope, the your ordinary volume envelope, we're not hearing any effect until we start to bring this modulation amount up. nice you also have sync let's take this up for this let's put a saw on for that and you has have cross modulation go nuts with that as well which is very very cool okay let's quickly take a look at this chord mode down here chord mode so you have a hold as soon as i play anything on the keyboard it will hold so i've let go now and it's just going to hold that note good for drones if you, you want to go in there or if you want to go kind of 
Play with the sound. Sub LFO to our cut our filter here. So you can play with stuff like that if you want to. Chord mode, right? This is how this works. Hold the chord first, any chord on the keyboard you like. Hold the chord and press chord. And now it says chord stored. You see that? So now when I play one note, do it again, take it off. I'm going to hold a, a more complex chord now. You'll see I'm starting on this D chord stored play that just this day on its own now there's a couple of different modes for this let's play a more simple chord here i'm gonna play uh just hold that c right so i'm playing this c here couple of different modes so mode look up here this is classic so if I hold a note uh, a chord it'll allow me to play let's make that a bit pleasant it allows me to play notes above I have it on and don't forget that was if I have it on stacked mode what will happen is it will repeat that chord for every note on the keyboard that I play so so that's how you work now like I said I don't have after touch but that's how you wear chord mode right so it's all off now you can also select here if i right click a chord so uh i'm going to do d sharp my melodic and press a key press chord sorry you can change Okay, so you get that's quite self-explanatory. Okay, this might be a half decent sound for a arpeggiator demo. So click on this. And delay on so we have delay some re uh, modulation for it as well it's synced okay we can link these together, by the way. I'm going to put hold on.
the mode. Random octave. Swing. Very cool. Okay. So that's ARP, your arpeggiator. So let's take it off hold. Let's just quickly have a listen to some other patches, shall we? So maybe uh, we go all, all, all. Uh, what's this liquid motion? You see these green things, these represent what's on the macros. some stuff the advanced section at the top is extremely clever so for example if we just again initialize this patch don't worry i'm going to play lots of patches soon so we, we, what we do to assign anything here is just touch the control so for example this cutoff frequency here as soon as I move a control, you'll see it says filter frequency, filter frequency. It'll say now resonance. So just like assigning the macros is which we drag a macro up like this and then right click to set the amount. So like that, for example. We can click in here and say just remove all. But for this, what we do is just literally just tap on it like this. So tap on the cutoff there. And now we can control the amount, the time, the delay. And so let's look, watch. So. But you've also got the the delay option as well. We have a sample and hold. A smoothing. Sync. Different waveforms. Let's take that delay down and this so you can hear these waveforms quickly. Okay, 
uh, and you can copy and paste any of this stuff or just clear it out and now it's not assigned to it's the same with the filter frequency it um sorry the uh the a the x adsr which is a which is an envelope exactly the same principle as this you touch any control you like so for example let's switch this on so let's set the reverb amount so click on the control and you'll see it says reverb amount here so click on this control like this and then all we need to do is Obvious ones will be, say, the frequency. Okay, so now you've created a pitch envelope. This will take uh, ages and ages to get up there. <laughs> Well, 112 seconds let's do it like shorter so take ages to get up there and initially immediately snap back down but if we have the decay set around the same time as this let's make it a little bit shorter just under two seconds now they'll come back down the same time so it'll go up and then it'll go down And that's how you assign stuff you just literally click on it assign whatever you want anywhere you like so let's spend the rest of this video oh well this is kind of obvious right the mod wheel section let's just um reset that so i'm having no effect so Just add a little bit of frequency for the reverb. Right, so if I push my mod wheel up, we have vibrato rate. Depth. Shape. So you've got square and sign and this our pitch bend if we have this switched on I think it disables this is only oscillated to it's going to bend and it's not turned up so Initial uh, brass ensemble from the classic pack, which is available to download for free. So this brass ensemble patch, this is one of the classic patches I've just shown you. It's it's available for free. This pack, and it just kind of gives you basic kind of basic starting points to design a patch. So for example, let's do something quickly, and I'll show you how you save a patch. Let's make a. Bring that up. Put some reverb on here. So say you've made your patch. Mm. 
and you want to save it. This is the button you press. So tap on this and you'll be given this screen where you can add tags and stuff. So let's say I don't, well, I think it's a lead sound. It's, um, is it Polly? Yeah. Or maybe, yeah, we'll just leave it as Polly and it's a soft sound. So soft, yeah, soft and warm. It's not really warm, is it? But we'll leave it as soft. And then we can rename this here. So I'm going to choose user, which is, uh, you know, a bank, a user bank. I'm going to change the name of this. Let me grab me keyboard here. I'm going to stick and just call this um, Mellow Brass and tstr tstr you can make some notes if you want to and then when you're happy with it all you need to do is hit save and then you'll get this here and you can go save and when you go to user now you will see that your mellow brass is there as well so i made a couple earlier before i started this plucky keys <laughs> This soft triangles. Okay, so um, if you've uh, enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, please consider becoming a patron. I am going to play out with uh, a bunch of patches for you. So let's start with some. Um, let's close this a minute. Go into our preset browser here, go to all and look for pads oh the sequences are always good fun aren't they let's do this we're on all 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 and yeah let's see oh uh, this one I'll see you guys later today Oh, 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 oh,
Yes.